everyone. Thanks so much for logging on to CBSDenver.com. Time for a few more minutes with our Xfinity Monday Live guest, George Guazdecki, joined us tonight at the View House Centennial. Obviously, game three of the Avs series tonight. What have you seen from the first two games in Nashville? What do the Avs need to do in order to steal one at the Pepsi Center? I love the way the Avs are competing. Obviously, at this time of year, it's got to be goaltending and making, managing the puck properly mm -hmm. and being disciplined enough not to take foolish penalties those three things and I, and I love the I, I can see the avalanche growing in confidence I mean when you first before this series began you looked at Nashville I mean the number one team in the league has talent in every position you look at Colorado just barely making it in the last day, day of the, uh, the regular season but I love the way how you, you seem you, you're starting to see the avalanche younger players growing growing in confidence growing in belief that you know what they can play with Nashville and uh, I expect this game to be a really good game. I expect the Avalanche to win this game. You mentioned the younger players on this Avalanche team. No matter what happens in this series, this team has a good, young, core group of players that potentially probably should be good for years to come. Without a doubt. The key for any team, you start building in the middle. You start with goaltending, then you, you move up to your blue line, and then center. Um, the Avalanche have got some really, I mean, Nathan McKinnon and Tyson jo Jost and, and um, Young Rantanen and, and some of these young kids, uh, uh, Alex Carefoot. Mm -hmm. um, the blue line is strong and it's going to get stronger. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm confident of that. Uh, certainly, uh, I don't think anybody expected Varley to be out, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, that's, that's. You got what Varley you out and you yeah. got one of your top defensemen, yeah. Eric Johnson, who's yeah. out too, and that obviously playing a, an issue in this series. We didn't have a chance to talk about this on the show, but Jared Bednar suffered through a very, very difficult year last year. 48 points, lowest in the NHL. How impressed are you with what he has been able to do, head coach to head coach, in terms of turning this thing around and getting this team back into the playoffs just a year after being the worst team in the league? Well, two things. I'm really impressed with, you know, Jared's patience and Joe's patience. I mean, I know that there are a lot of people who were uh, clamoring for a change um, and putting a lot of expectations on Joe, whether it was from the media or just the general public. And, and I think Joe did a really good job of saying, okay, you know what, I hired Jared. I believe in him. He's shown what he can do at this level. Um, and uh, he's, he needs time to be able to prove mm -hmm. himself because he came in at a very, very difficult situation at a very difficult time of year. So, uh, you know, I give, I extend a lot of credit to Joe for what he did, uh, staying patient with the process. And I think Jared has done the very same thing. He had a year to be able to get under his belt, uh, understand the kind of team he had, and uh, put together his own staff. And I think you can see the results as they speak for themselves right now. You spent time at the college level at DU, obviously, then we're in the NHL. Now you're coaching high school hockey mm -hmm. at Valor Christian. What's it like coaching at the grassroots level? Coaching is coaching. What I've learned to appreciate is the things we don't have. You know, all my career, I ha never had to request or, or get on a phone and, and call around for ice for practice ice, for game ice. We always had a locker room. You know, here, uh, every high school kid in this state, you know, puts their gear in the trunk, either mom or dad, or they, if they're old enough, they drive themselves to the rink, they pull their gear out of the trunk, they go into an assigned locker room, they're in that locker room just long enough to change, get on the ice for an hour or whatever, and it's this back out, quick shower, if there are showers, and then into the into the car, and, and uh, you know, um, those are the things that you kind of miss. Uh, but certainly the coaching standpoint has been a lot of fun. I mean, the kids are like sponges. They're learning an awful lot. Uh, I think I've, I've had to learn as much as they have as far as what they're capable of, how fast I can push them, how hard I can push them, what I should expect from them as far as systems, things like that is concerned. But I've had a, I've had a ball. And, you know, and, uh, it's really interesting to watch. I mean, the state championship game was played at the Pepsi Center just a few weeks ago. Uh, and um, there was 4,000 people there, almost 4,000, not quite. But to me, that, I, that showed a lot of people, you know what, there's an awful lot of interest in high school hockey here, and, and uh, it was a great atmosphere. Regis did a terrific job um, of winning the state title. Um, 
and uh, certainly uh, we want to get back there again next year. So, but it, it's been a lot of fun. We've got uh, a, a, a good group of kids. We've got a JV team that is supplying our varsity team with younger talent, and and uh, just going to continue to get better. Well, George, we are so appreciative that you were able to come on the show tonight. You were a fantastic guest. Best of luck next season at Valor, and uh, hopefully we'll get to have you on again real soon. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate George, it. Thanks thank so you. much, and thank you for logging on to CBSDenver.com.